That's it for us. I'm Bree Walker. Thanks for joining us today. Up next, Jim Jensen and Carol Martin with Channel 2 News at 6. Here's what's ahead. This is Mike Schneider on Wall Street. The stock market suffers its second worst loss in history. We'll explain what happened here today. I'm Josh Mankiewicz in Long Island's financial district, where it looks as if brokers and investors are headed into another frantic, bruising week of stock trading. A star witness in the Howard Beach case wraps up his testimony against four old friends, but his life may never be the same. I'm Mary Murphy in Queens. I'm Dick Oliver in Manhattan, where Mayor Koch throws in the towel in a bitter battle with a crusading priest. Maury Alter here at the posh sale to benefit the lighthouse for the blind. Whose is this? This dress is Raquel Welch. You'll see that and more coming up. Now, Jim Jensen, Carol Martin, Water Wolf, Dr. Frank Field, and the Channel 2 News team. This is Channel 2 News at 6. Everything you need to know, because anything can happen in New York. Good evening. There was no rest for the weary at all in Wall Street today. Another brutally bearish session which left the market shaking, the frustration spilling over into a deadly confrontation in Florida. As the Dow Jones was heading toward its second worst day ever, down 156 points. A big loser in the stock market fallout opened fire in a Miami Merrill Lynch office. Police say 53-year-old Arthur Kane shot and killed himself after murdering the office manager and critically wounding another executive. The distraught wife of the injured broker was brought to the scene and given the troubling news. Her husband had been shot. Oh! Oh, no, my baby! <laughs> Authorities say the gunman had been asked to cover heavy debts arising from losses on Wall Street. Instead of settling his account, he pulled out a gun. A customer of the brokerage firm in Arthur Kane, 53 years of age, came in, uh, opened fire on two vice presidents of the company, killing one of them on the scene. Mr. Kane then turned the gun on himself and took his own life. The surviving broker was airlifted to a nearby hospital in critical condition. Office workers just could not believe what had happened. My manager? One official at the office located in a fashionable shopping center said violent crime there was unheard of there. Said the man, I'm sick, I'm crushed. Well, today's shooting in Miami is perhaps a symbolic bubble of stress and anxiety that simply burst. A bubble that has been expanding ever since last week's Black Monday. Channel 2's Mike Schneider is live now at the New York Stock Exchange with reaction. Mike? Okay, I'll we'll refer back to Black Monday. It was called, they're calling this Black and Blue Monday here on the Stock Exchange today. The numbers are down, and they're down quite a bit. A lot of people had expected some sort of decline today. They didn't feel that just because Friday came and went and Monday arrived and it was a brand new week that things would get dramatically better here in the market. Not by a long shot, especially when they got the early returns in, that things had gone very bad in the overseas exchanges in Tokyo and London and Hong Kong. But today they really weren't quite prepared to see it decline nearly as much as it did. 156 points, that is the worst, the second worst decline in history by a sheer number standpoint and the eighth worst in terms of percentage. Close at 1793 today, the volume was 308 million shares. So another bad day. And once again, we should remind you that the session was shortened by two hours again. The market once again closing at 2 p.m. Uh, my colleague John Slattery is joining me right now, and I understand, John, they're going to close it at 2 p.m. throughout the rest of the week. That's right. It's uh, something they're going to have to do in order to handle the huge volume. The reaction from brokers here today to uh, what happened here on Wall Street can really be called a mixed bag. Uh, some felt that with the Dow down so far, it was merely as expected. But others feel that we're really far from out of the woods. Yet, as you look at the floor this afternoon, which uh, last week at this time and all last week was pretty much still littered with people doing work at this hour of the evening. Tonight, very light activity as brokers begin to take a breather. This afternoon's closing bell at 2 p.m. was a welcome relief to most traders, many of whom had to work this weekend in order to process all of last week's trading. We really needed the weekend very, very much to, uh, to uh, help us out and straighten us out of this thing. Today, most traders said the atmosphere on the floor, despite the heavy trading, was much closer to normal. There was no panic, so I think that's the better side of the whole market. Even though the Dow was down? Even though it's down, it's no one's panicking, rushing in, killing each other just to sell their stocks. But plenty of stocks were sold. Losers outnumbered gainers 13 to 1. At 10 a.m., the Dow was down 85 points at 1865.71. At 11 a.m., the Dow was down 96 points 
at noon, down 132. At 1 p.m., down 120 points. And at the close, down 156 points. It's a sign that a lot of us expect that things will stabilize. We think that things will stabilize. Experts say the dip in the Dow would have been much worse today, duplicating last week when computerized sell-off orders kicked in, dumping huge lots of blue-chip stocks. But today, people were more in control, and computerized selling was pretty much suspended. Well, we had a meltdown, or a near meltdown, last Monday. Primarily, not because of anything happening in the economy, but because of these very sophisticated computer techniques. And that's eliminated today, and the market's coming back. The ticker, hours behind last week, was only about a half hour behind at its worst today and was with the market or just minutes behind much of the day. Slow compared to last week. Do you feel encouraged by this? Well, I feel encouraged myself, my own opinion, uh, because I feel that uh, people are waiting to see what the response is going to be from, uh, from the government. I, I feel the government's going to help us, you know. And while the exchange had planned to be closing early only three days, it announced late this afternoon it will close at 2 p.m. all the rest of this week. We want to assure everyone that the systems uh, are continued to operate efficiently, and, and we are taking this action to, to assure that. So, a shortened day all the rest of the week. The volume, however, even on this shortened day, is still enormous, 350 million shares today. Brokers and investors hope, it, hope that the, uh, the selling and the losses will ease off and that some confidence will rebuild in this market. Michael? And perhaps a measure of the confidence will come not from here, but when we start getting the results of what happens in Tokyo, which the markets will be open there in a short period, and then London, of course, and Hong Kong, and once again back here. The question is, when will somebody start building the confidence for the other markets? Which one will take the lead first? And I guess that's something that uh, the analysts really can't agree on. A lot of people are looking for that uh, from Washington and hoping that the deficit can be reduced, and that's the argument over taxes versus savings. Okay, John. Let's go back to the studio. Mike and John, I don't want to be in a position of throwing gasoline <laughs> on a fire, but have you heard any people down there speaking about genuinely now being really afraid of what's going to happen? I, I could not hear the question. I could couldn't you? either, Jim. Uh, Jim, we're having a little audio heard, problem. Okay. Can you not hear? Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Have you met any people down there who now say they are genuinely frightened about what they think is going to happen. Sure, yeah. especially the, the, uh, the younger brokers uh, who, as we pointed out uh, earlier, they have uh, never really seen a bear market before and they are frightened. And an awful lot of people who've taken their paper profits, reinvested them in more paper, expecting to have a huge windfall, have suddenly seen that completely wiped out. So now they're back to uh, what they may have had a few years ago, square one. They may have had hundreds of thousands of dollars and now they're pretty much wiped out. Some of the older brokers, we might add, express more confidence in where things are going, but we can't tell if they're truly more confident or just better at covering up their anxiety. Mike, John, thank you very much. Good reporting, gentlemen. Once again, the worries on Wall Street spread all over the world today. Stock markets overseas taking a brutal beating. Hardest hit was the Hong Kong Exchange, open for the first time in four days. Uh, this was their Black Monday. Stocks plunging 33 percent. Hong Kong's worst one-day drop on record. In Tokyo, the drop was not so steep, close to 5 percent but it's still the third biggest decline in the history of Tokyo's market. In London, despite fast and furious trading, the story was about the same. Stock sinking more than 7%. And the dollar was also down today throughout the European continent. That could force up interest rates in this country to attract foreign investor money necessary to finance the United States budget deficit. And Jim, with all the focus now on that deficit, President Reagan began talks on it today with congressional leaders. Those talks are expected to focus on ways to trim the deficit by at least $23 billion, including possibly massive spending cuts and possible tax hikes. Although many Democrats are blaming the president for the deficit, the first session was described as hopeful. We do have some uh, fundamental agreements. One of them is that we surely will go forward and achieve the $23 billion uh, deficit reduction. The president said we're here to, uh, to come together and get some agreement on, on the figures. I'm not going to lay any preconditions. I said the other night that all's on the table except Social Security, and we'll go from here. Well, President Reagan has indicated he is open to almost all proposals except cuts in Social Security. The talks continue tomorrow afternoon, Jim. While much of the economic turmoil is focusing on the big investors and their big losses, the small investors are sitting in the shadows, nervously watching their money. That story from correspondent Josh Mankiewicz. 
One week after Black Monday, stockbrokers are discovering their clients' moods are still dark. They're extremely nervous. And what I've been telling them is to stay calm. It's my job to help them to protect their capital. Good afternoon, Todd Selter. Talk to me. The sense here in Great Neck is that while many continue to sell, their confidence either shaken or destroyed, some investors are looking for bargains, picking up cheap stocks while the market's low. Sometimes they get lucky. Terry, can you cut a check for Norman Cohn, please? How low will it go? How bad will it get? Merrill Lynch brokers get the word off the street via a squawk box. Uh, other than possibly a break to marginal new lows, We've seen the worst in the Dow, and that it probably won't break substantially beneath Tuesday's intraday low. Who's safest? Perhaps those in safe stocks, utilities, tax-free bonds, and government mortgages. Harold Suss handles about 300 fixed-income clients. People uh, uh, are pretty realistic, and when you explain what the, uh, a person's particular situation is, uh, they're, they're reassured and uh, then don't call you for another day. Brokers had been hoping that shorter trading hours on the exchange would give everyone a chance to catch their breath and perhaps bring some stability to the market. But today's steep drop didn't do anything to restore investors' confidence. At the Charles Schwab offices in Great Neck, investors crowded around the Quotron machines and offered their own theories as to what caused the collapse and how to pull out of it. The president doesn't reduce the deficit. Everybody loses. Yeah. But we're all going broke. Yeah, not that, that wind did it. The value of my assets went down in half. And um, my attitude is just to sit back and wait and probably take a few years to recover. Both buyers and sellers tonight are looking at another week of uncertainty. Brokers are saying keep calm, but their customers don't see anything calming on the bottom line. In Great Neck, Josh Mankiewicz, Channel 2 News. Well, coming up, a shocking story from the witness stand. When Channel 2 News at 6 returns, a star witness in the Howard Beach trial finds himself in the hot seat. Plus, we'll have this report. Know anybody who takes the Lincoln Tunnel to work? Well, if you do, they could be in for a much longer or a much shorter commute, depending on whether they take the car in or ride the bus. I'm Jane Bellas Mitchell, and I'll explain. It's all part of a controversial new proposal. You've got style. You've taken the best and refined it. A lot more. You want a car with a lot of breeding. A car already recognized as pick of the litter. The all-new 88 Corolla Sedan. It all starts at your Toyota dealer. He'll help with a deal that makes sense for you. Great car, great deal, but you gotta go see him. Now when you step out, you'll come alive. So head to your Toyota dealer and ride with the best. Quality GE appliances, exclusive GE features, and big savings. Now, during the GE National Appliance Sale. Stop in and save big on a wide assortment of selected GE refrigerators, gas and electric ranges, dishwashers, washers and dryers, and microwave ovens. And your satisfaction is guaranteed or your money back with the GE 90-day money back or exchange option. For the premier dealer nearest you, call the GE Answer Center service, 800-626-2000. Now a beam of light can end your hemorrhoidal suffering. At Laser Surgery Care, a physician will use the light of a laser to remove your hemorrhoids effectively. Recovery can be quicker, easier, and with less discomfort than other treatments. And normally there's no hospital stay. Why wait? Call Laser Surgery Care now. There's no more need to suffer in silence. Call 212-OK-LASER. That's 212-OK-LASER. Call today. Until now, only a few gourmets knew about Melita Extra Premium Coffee. But the news is starting to filter down. Rich, full-flavored Melita Extra Premium. Coffee so smooth and mellow, it could make the competition bitter. Melita makes it all so easy, because Melita makes it all. Ah, Melita. This was the last day of testimony from the star prosecution witness in the Howard Beach racial trial. And when the questioning was finished, one defense attorney was calling him the best witness for the defense. Correspondent Mary Murphy has the story of a day of detail concerning the night of confrontation. 
Robert Riley completed his mission for the prosecution ducking in a back door, while upstairs, his old friend, Michael Perone, charged with manslaughter and the death of Michael Griffith, marked his 18th birthday on trial. I wish I wasn't here. I wanted everything to be over with already. Today, Perone's controversial defense attorney, Stephen Murphy, set out to blast Riley off the stand during cross-examination. Murphy accused Riley of making up stories about the attack after striking a deal for leniency with the prosecution. Murphy shouted, did you testify last week you left parts out? Riley answered yes. Murphy boomed, so you lied. That brought an objection from the prosecution. But Murphy continued, finally getting Riley to admit he saw two black men with knives during a confrontation outside the New Park Pizza Parlor before he noticed defendant Scott Kern with a bat. Murphy boomed, what did you see first, the bat or the knives? Riley answered, I see knives. The knives were out. The young white men weren't moving forward. They weren't doing anything. I believe that the jury will infer that they were afraid and they were just standing there. It's only when Riley takes the bat that he moves forward, nobody else moves forward but Riley. At the core of this case is just how far the white teens chased Michael Griffith. Did they literally force him onto this Belt Parkway exit ramp, chasing him across three lanes to his death? Or did Michael Griffith have options, as the defense claims, of where he could run? Riley completed his testimony this afternoon, telling the jury he agreed to cooperate to correct the wrong that took place that December night. He pleaded guilty to assault and could receive probation or four years in prison. Do you think the jury will be affected by the deal that Mr. Riley made? The jury will consider the agreement that Mr. Riley made, and that will be a, you know, that will certainly bear on his credibility. And that's Hines may subpoena court officer Dominic Blum later this week, the driver of the car that hit Michael Griffith. Blum was cleared of wrongdoing, but the defense may portray him as the intervening factor in Griffith's death. I'm Mary Murphy, Channel 2 News. A British barge pulled into New York Harbor today. It's destined to become this city's latest floating jail. It's called the Bibby Venture. It once held troops who fought in the Falkland Islands. In about three weeks, it will house some 400 inmates who will be transferred from overcrowded Rikers Island. New York is leasing two barges for five years, and a permanent dock site should be ready at Rikers in about eight months. A refitted Staten Island ferry is already being used as a floating jail. Mayor Koch says he's throwing in the towel. Up next, the story of a priest who makes a habit of fighting City Hall. Also, the story of a new plan for the Lincoln Tunnel running into gridlock. We'll have a live report on a new way to ease the rush home. Plus, why AIDS patients are being made to suffer. A special report later on Channel 2 News at 6. Potemkin does it again in 1988. We'll beat your best deal on any new 1988 Mitsubishi or you get the car free. Choose from Priesus, Montero, Starion, or the incredible new Gallant Sigma. And Potemkin has hundreds of brand new Mitsubishis in stock. It's a fact. Nobody will beat a Potemkin deal. And we're so sure if we can't beat your deal, you get the car free. Now what are you waiting for? Doesn't it seem just when you're getting used to summer, fall is upon you. Now Toro has an easy way to keep up with fall. The new Toro Recovac, a powerful blower that blows leaves off patios, from under bushes, lawns, anywhere. Then vacuum shreds and bags them. For a fast, easy cleanup, use the Toro Recovac before the next season is upon you. Factory rebates up to $10 at Pergament. Breakfast were as it was meant to be. It would be a centuries-old balance of fruits, grains, and nuts. The breakfast Europeans called muesli. Now muesli comes to America as Kellogg's mueslicks. Oats, wheat, rice, corn, barley, raisins, dates, and hazelnuts. Kellogg's mueslicks. Five grain or bran. What breakfast was meant to be. One of New York City's most well-known priests is finding out once again you can fight City Hall. A father, Bruce Ritter, a force behind a home for runaway teenagers, went right up against the powerful mayor of New York. And as political correspondent Dick Oliver reports, he may have won. The battle was over this place, the Maritime Union building at 17th Street and 9th Avenue in the Chelsea section of Manhattan. A building coveted by this man, Mayor Koch, who wants it to house 300 homeless men and 900 convicts on work release. 
But this man wants it too. He's Father Bruce Ritter of Covenant House, who wants it for runaway teenagers who come in off the city streets. It became clear today that Ritter won the public relations victory. Explain this Facing morning, the likelihood of defeat by the priest, and, uh, Koch threw in the towel, uh, but not before accusing the clergyman of foul play. Uh, you know, the golden rule, uh, which we all should live by, which is do unto others as thou would have others do unto you, was not observed by Father Ritter. Appearing on television yesterday, Father Ritter said Koch was the bully. He's using all the, the enormous power and authority of his office and of the city of New York to intimidate a private citizen. The dispute boils down to this. Koch says the city had a handshake agreement to buy this building for $27 million. Father Ritter stepped in and upped the ante to $30 million. But if it had been reversed, if he had had a handshake deal uh, for $27 million and the city had come in and offered $30 million, wouldn't everybody condemn the city for not having observed the cardinal golden rule? Whether Father Ritter broke the golden rule in winning this building is for others to decide. The fact is that he beat Koch with another rule, a rule of business. He was fastest with the mostest. In Manhattan, I'm Dick Oliver, Channel 2 News. A city shelter exclusively for homeless veterans, believed to be the first in this country, opened today in Queens. It's a 275-bed facility offering special counseling on Vietnam veterans' benefits, in addition to meals and medical care as well. It is hoped this shelter will inspire volunteers from the veteran community and also help boost the self-esteem of the vets. A veteran organization feels stronger than another veteran that needs help. Okay, now we serve this guy, and we don't help him, who else going to help him? Because remember how the Vietnam War was, with a lot of people against the war. And so they don't know who to trust anymore. Some still feel that way. Really? They feel at home with... They feel home here. City officials estimate there are roughly 3,000 homeless veterans in the city shelter system right now, and more are living on the streets. As many as 1,500 may be Vietnam-era vets. Tired of the chill? Well, don't complain. Because Dr. Frank Field is saying it's going to get worse. Rain's on the way, too, when Channel 2 News at 6 comes back. Getting strong is very taxing. Taxing? I don't pay federal taxes on what First Investors Tax Exempt Fund earns. That's risky. No, First Investors Tax Exempt Fund is AAA rated, and the securities in its portfolio are insured. You don't see that often. Right. First Investors Tax Exempt Fund seeks to deliver tax-free dividend income every month. I'll never handle that way. You don't have to wait. Call 800-237-3500. Think first, then invest. First Investors Tax Exempt Fund. Friends, me and my Fledgematic would like to tell you about a carpet treated with amazing new Scotchgard stain release. Why? Because it's easy to stain a carpet. It's just this easy! Of course, when your carpet's protected with Scotchgard stain release, cleanup is just this easy. And how do you get a carpet protected with new Scotchgard stain release? It's just this easy. On tonight's CBS Evening News, the Dow Jones average plummets nearly 160 points as foreign markets also take a stunning dive. President Reagan works with congressional leaders on the current financial crisis. In Miami, a man with heavy stock losses enters a brokerage house, shoots two people before killing himself. And London tabloids headline not with financial news, but with reports of a royal marriage possibly on the rocks. That and more following Channel 2 News at 6. So stay here with us. Time was, it was the news or the times, the times or the news. Now everybody wants to know, how's New York News Day doing? Circulation's up, Brooklyn, Queens, all around Manhattan. It's become New York's fastest growing paper. And growing faster every day. New York News Day is taking a stand in New York. Yeah, one stand after the other. New York News Day, on top of the news and ahead of the times. Low price, you hear it from everybody. But there's got to be more to audio, video, and appliances than just a low price. At Newmark and Lewis, you get the lowest price and much more. A bigger and better choice. Salespeople who listen and explain. A company that cares about you. Newmark and Lewis, much more than just the lowest price. If Lewis is watching. 
The new immigration law can be confusing for illegal aliens who want legal status. Catholic charities can help with the process. Call today and reach out. Well, here's Dr. Frankfield. Jim had a great weekend. Uh, how was yours? Mine was fine. What Good. did you do, Jim? <laughs> Don't want to tell me. All right. Isn't that a nice one? Well, the, the weather, weather helped. The weather was good, and the weather was good today, too, but I'm afraid we've got some showers heading this way. Right down the Midtown area, the temperature is 50 degrees. We're up to 59 this afternoon. The relative humidity is 34 percent. Winds are calm. Uh, we've got a falling barometer. The big ridge of high pressure, when the high moves out, the barometer begins to fall and slide off, and that's just what's happening. But the mild air will be around for just a short while. There are the clouds and the showers that are moving in this direction. Uh, there's a little bit of a low-pressure storm system down the lower Mississippi Valley. So between the two, the cool air that's pushing eastward and the low that's beginning to form right down in the lower Mississippi Valley, where they've had lots of showers and thunderstorms, uh, we're right on track because this low will move right up along the coast. The big cool air mass triggering off showers ahead of it will move in two. So between the two, we're going into some showers by late tomorrow, tomorrow night, and into part of Wednesday, a good part of Wednesday. But by Thursday, the dome of high pressure moves in and takes over. So the forecast for the metropolitan area for tonight, it will remain mostly clear and quite cool once again. Poughkeepsie was down to 19. They'll get down into the low 20s once more tonight and here in the city around 40 to 45. Tomorrow, we're looking for increasing clouds during the day, sunny to start with, increasing clouds during the afternoon, and by evening, scattered showers moving in our direction. The five days ahead, once those scattered showers move in, they'll stay with us into Wednesday. Then as the colder air moves in, a clearing trend sets in Wednesday, and we have some cool weather once again, mid-50s on both Thursday and Friday. We also have a reminder for you that coming up later tonight at 11.30, we have a special, a half-hour special. Hundreds of people will die in a tri-state area in fires this year. Most of these folks die because they just don't know what to do when fire happens, and they wait too late to learn how. So tonight at 11.30, we'll have a half-hour special, tell you what you can do in a fire, whether you live in a private home or in an apartment, the steps you should take and the things you should know about fire. Carol? Okay, we'll be watching. Thank you. I'd urge everyone to watch. Tired of just spinning your wheels? Well, up next, a new plan to ease rush hour traffic from New Jersey runs into a roadblock. Also coming up, the anguish of AIDS. Those in need are being refused treatment. We'll have a special report when Channel 2 News at 6 continues. I want the news in a flash. So I listen to 1010 10 wins two, three, four times a day. You give us 22 minutes, we'll give you the world. New York. Keeping a business here is tough, but I can't imagine leaving. Con Edison can help. Through Project Appleseed, we offer reduced electric and gas rates to businesses that start, relocate, or expand in certain areas. Project Appleseed because we want your business here in New York. This is New York. This is where I belong. Con Edison, the energy of New York. Of the 4,000 beers brewed in Germany, only a few have made it to America. And the one that's made it to the top is Beck's, the number one imported German beer. When you look better, you feel better. There's no better time than now to start looking better and feeling better. New York Health and Racquet Club. Experience it. You may know this feeling. Motorists who use the Lincoln Tunnel often feel like they're sitting in a parking lot, paralyzed by backups that can certainly jangle your nerves. If you think it's a tight fit now, though, consider there may be one less lane for cars to use. That is because it may be turned over to buses. Channel 2's Jane Velas Mitchell is live now at the Lincoln Tunnel with that part of the story. Jane? Well, Carol, we are here at the mouth of the Lincoln Tunnel on the New Jersey side, which you might say is a hill in the battle over public transportation. On the one side, you have the people determined, no matter what, to drive their cars through the tunnel into the city. On the other side, you have the bus riders. Now, ever since they set up a special bus lane into the Lincoln Tunnel in 1971, more and more people have opted to take the buses in. In fact, there are now major traffic jams in the bus lane during the morning commute especially. So the Department of Transportation wants to create a second special bus lane going east into the Lincoln Tunnel during the morning commute. That should cut the bus commuter's average ride down by about 20 minutes. But all that extra bus traffic is expected to add about 20 minutes and possibly more to the commuters driving in their cars. So car owners hate the idea. We're having a tough enough time uh, getting through here as it is, the cars. 
another bus lane if it would be a, a hazard for us. I think that's a crazy idea. I mean, it takes us an hour to get in the city from 7 o'clock to 9 o'clock every day. I think that would be crazy. There's got to be another way. I don't know what it is, but there's got to be another way. Now, specifically, the new bus lane would start about six miles out near the Meadowlands along Route 3, heading towards the tunnel. Critics fear it will create a major bottleneck at the juncture where Route 3, the Turnpike, and 495 meet. But still, even the critics admit there has to be some solution that the state should encourage public transit. Now, this debate is bound to continue. In fact, it's going to continue tonight at 7.30. There's a public hearing at the East Brunswick Public Library. So. You might want to go there and uh, give your opinion on this subject. If approved, the new bus lane should go into effect sometime next year. That's a scene from here. Back to you in the studio. Jane, thank you. Up next, how AIDS victims are made to suffer. People who need help the most are being turned away, we're learning. And we'll tell you more when we return with part one of our special report. I'm Barbara Nevins. Tonight, our hidden camera follows as healthcare professionals turn away a person with AIDS. Explore TWA's solar system. Now TWA gives you the hottest deals under the sun so you can discover the beautiful beaches of Florida. Explore Hawaii on a TWA vacation package. Or enjoy a vacation that lets you see the many sides of Puerto Rico. Or find the Bahamas and feel like you've found another world. Explore TWA's solar system. Find out how good we really are. make more paint than anyone else in the world. Enough to paint fleets of jumbos and 10 million houses. Last year, we made enough carpet fiber to lay a strip more than twice around the world. And we supply plastics to all the biggest car manufacturers in Europe. Thanks to our dyes, last year a huge 286 million pairs of jeans were blue. But perhaps more important than all that, four million hearts rely on our drugs. We manufacture in 40 countries and we sell to over 150. ICI, world class. Where can you get your best year-end deal on Nissan? The name is... Auto Plaza Nissan, Westbury, Long Island. Number one in Nissan car sales in the USA. That means the lowest prices anywhere. Look, 87 four-door Sentras with automatic transmission, $79.95. Stanzas, $93.95. Maximas, $14.295. Get yours before they're gone. Auto Plaza Nissan, Old Country Road, Westbury, Long Island. Open Sundays. The disease AIDS has been called a living death, but the emotions, the fears, the reality of living with death, it is something almost impossible to really understand, unless, of course, it's actually happening to you. Now, thousands of people wake up to that reality, the reality that the end of their life is staring them right in the face. This evening, correspondent Barbara Nevins has the first of her two-part report, what it's like to have the shadow of death as a companion. Boy, me. Farrar's rich baritone blends smoothly with the chorus of voices. For years, Jay Farrar himself quietly blended into the community of young homosexual men in Greenwich Village. But last spring, he became a New York statistic, one of the nearly 12,000 with the deadly AIDS virus. Immediately, he had two fears. How much time I had, you know, left to experience many of the good things in life. Um, and how people would react to me. It's no secret that reaction to a person with AIDS is frequently fear and revulsion. With the help of Jay Farrar and an undercover camera, we discovered that health professionals are not immune from the panic. I have AIDS. Would, would that be any problem with me being treated now? Yes. You know, it's not no offense. You know, well, I... No offense, she says, with simple phrases of rejection like that. The little time people with AIDS have left is frequently turned into a humiliating living nightmare. There is a widespread outbreak of discrimination based on fear, misinformation, and outright prejudice. 
Discriminating against people with AIDS violates state and city law, yet our investigation reveals doors quickly close on the person with AIDS. A hidden camera followed Jay to three dental offices where I had made appointments for him. The Northern Dispensary Dental Clinic in Greenwich Village turned him away. So we're not able to uh, take anyone with AIDS. Why? That's just a rule. I don't break the rules. The director would not talk to us on camera, but said the clinic doesn't treat people with infectious diseases. At the Smile Center on West 72nd Street, a dental hygienist would not clean Jay's teeth. The hygienist that you were scheduled with, she yeah. can't see you. But the other hygienist, she has a patient now, but she will see you, but she can't see you today. Because of my condition? Right. The Smile Center's owner wouldn't talk to us on camera, but said his two offices regularly treat people with AIDS. At our third stop, Smile New York, not connected to the Smile Centers, Jay was refused treatment. As he persisted, he was told a physician's letter might get him treatment. He was also referred to another dentist. The doctor named Dr. Mario Andriato. He doesn't take, he doesn't go by referrals. Yeah. yeah. No, if he wants to, you know, drop in, call up the office. Mario Andriola directs the AIDS Dental Clinic at St. Clair's Hospital. He talked with the Smile Dentist on the phone. I explained that his referral of the patient here um, uh, to me was dumping an abandonment and he should be very careful as to what he said to the patient um, and that the patient might bring charges against him. The dentist who owns Smile New York told me it was all a misunderstanding. I don't refer any patients uh, since it's my office. Uh, they weren't following my instructions. Health officials say masks and gloves should shield from AIDS-contaminated blood. But nationwide, 12 health care workers, including a New York dentist, have contracted the virus on the job. And there is worry. A lot of the problem has to do with ignorance. We don't know ignorance of the disease. We don't know all the facets of the disease. And we don't know how easy it ultimately is for us to catch the infection in the office setting. No one knows how many dentists and doctors turn patients away, but the fear is spread throughout the health care community. We zeroed in on Queens County. Jay Farrar, at our request, went down a list of doctors. I have AIDS. I'm having a dermatology problem right now. I don't think it is related. Would you be able to help me? The doctor. No, I don't treat that. I have AIDS. Would you be able to help me? The doctor. Give me your number. I'll call you right back. I'm very busy right now. I have AIDS. Would Dr. Co be able to help me? The receptionist. No, no, I'm sorry. He was even rejected by a psychiatrist. And we're looking for a psychiatrist in Whitestone. Could you possibly help? The doctor. I really don't think so. The United States Surgeon General warns the failure of health professionals to treat people with AIDS threatens the, quote, ethical foundation of health care itself. The New York City Human Rights Commission is investigating complaints against doctors and dentists who allegedly discriminate. But it's believed there are far more cases of people being denied treatment than there are complaints. Jim, Carol? Wouldn't it seem that it threatens not just the ethical foundation of the medical field, but the ethical condition of the entire society? I would think so. I would think so. What is the logical extension? But, you know, you have to have some sympathy for the doctors and nurses and healthcare professionals who really worry who don't believe the caution that masks and gloves will protect against infected blood. Health officials say the only way you can get AIDS is through... Well, if they don't believe it, how needles, the needles and blood believe it? And mm -hmm. semen. Well, that's exactly right, and that's what's so confusing. But health, health professionals, we found, are very, very frightened. This afternoon, a nurse called me up and said, I don't want to have a job if I'm going to die, there's no point in me being a nurse if I have to worry about dying. What do you say to someone? You know, on one hand, you commend Mr. Farrar, was that his name, yeah. for um, announcing that he has the disease, but sometimes you wonder maybe he should just go ahead and, but that's as duplicitous as the other. That's correct. Well, yeah. many dentists and doctors say that that may be the case. There may be people who come to them who don't say that they're, they have the virus or they have the disease. Barbara, thank you. Part two tomorrow. Part two tomorrow. There's a lot more still ahead on Channel News at 6 tonight. Warner's up next with the return of the Giants. Plus, it was all in the cards for the Twins. The new champions paint the town red when we return. Dick Lewis is watching. Mark and Lewis. Dick Lewis is watching. Mark and Lewis. Watching the price. Giving great advice. Watching the store. To save you so much more. New Mark and Lewis. We always beat the competition. Dick Lewis is 
watch it. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking this guy is never going to get to the bank today. Wrong. Because I've got a phone. And I've got the George Money Management System from First Jersey National Bank. With George, I could check my balance, apply for a loan, even pay my hospital bill, all from an ordinary touchstone phone. You can't beat the George Money Management System from First Jersey National Bank. If you can get to a phone, you can get to the bank. Mmm, this tastes like Carvel ice cream, but it really is an ice cream. Darling, that's a contradiction. Mmm, and it's made fresh at Carvel. Mmm, tell me more. And it only has 18 and a half calories per fluid ounce. Well, you gonna give me some? Comes in lots of flavors and even in cake. What is it? Feed me, feed me! <laughs> it's Thinny Thin, a dietary frozen dessert, and I got it at Carvel. Thinny Thin? Yeah, Thinny Thin, for fatty fats like you. Now, come on, give me some. Okay, here, it's all yours. Hey, you finished it! <laughs> There's a new civilization where people have evolved beyond the need to stand in line. Mastered the art of being served when they wish. Developed technology for continuous communications. And conquered space for work and relaxation. Amtrak's Metroliner service. The most advanced civilization from New York to Washington. America, all aboard Amtrak. Well, the Senators, yes. with an assumed name, finally won. My life is complete. There it is. The Senators <laughs> will win the World Series four games to three, and they do it after watching these guys living in Washington, last place for over 40 years. This is a dream come true. I mean, you have to be a Washingtonian to appreciate it. Your father it. would really be thrilled. Your father would be thrilled. The whole family would be thrilled. I mean, this is something. This, this really is an historic moment to any Washingtonian that watched these guys play there and then saw him move to Minnesota. And of course, so. it's unusual that both home teams won all their games. That's right. That's right. First now, this, time in a Imagine it flipped season. around. The Cardinals had four games at home, and the Twins. <laughs> had... Next year. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'll tell you what. This, that seventh game last night had to be yep. a great walking advertisement for the use of limited videotape replay for baseball. Uh, it, in fact, there were four calls if they had occurred in the National Football League, they would have been reversed. Absolutely. By videotape replay. Let's take a look at them. Let's go to the videotape. <laughs> First of all, bottom of the second, here comes Don Baylor. Here comes the throw. There's Pena. Watch Baylor's right foot. Hey, that man is safe. Forget it, Dave Phillips. Come on. Then Baylor up, ground ball. Keep in mind, forget the fielder's glove. Forget the fielder. Where is the ball when the fielder touches it? Fair. That's a fair ball. Lee Wire calls it foul. Big play. Gagne comes up. And Gagne, watch this one. The ground ball to Lindemann. Here it is. Lindemann, the flip to uh, for, uh, Lindemann. Flip to McGrain. Look at McGrain. Look at his left foot. See, he actually pulls back the base. Come on, Gagne was out, and he hadn't reached it. Watch and, of this. course, it tied the game. Then Hurst picked off. First of all, here's Herbeck. Let's say it's not interference. Forget interference. Look at his left foot. He's safe. That's right. And they called him out. <laughs> Goodness gracious. I'll tell you, for the yeah. record, World Series umpires, we call, they're picked by the league and the supervisor of umpires. But... Yes. These plays don't happen in slow motion. Absolutely. I give, them, give them credit. Give them credit. they got to call it like that. But more reason. Use videotape replay on a limited basis. And, by the way, all umpires must umpire six years before they can work in a World Series. Each Cardinal, uh, each twin or Senator's winning share, 85000 The losing share, 56000 Here's a nice gesture. The Cardinals voted a half a share to their orthopedic surgeon the team's orthopedic surgeon because all those guys were injured. Nice. Not that the orthopedic surgeon probably doesn't need it. But <laughs> the team has kept them right. in business. That's right. Twelve players uh, filed for free agency today, including Dave Borghetti and Bill Gullickson and the uh, Candelaria of the Mets. All right, pro picks. We said take the Giants, give the nine and a half. If you did, easy win. Let's go to the videotape. A lot of offense for the Giants. First of all, Joe Morris. Remember he gained 179 yards against the Cardinals the last time they played? Well, yesterday, 88 yards and 22 carries, tackled by is Cedric Max. George Adams coming out of the backfield, six receptions for 79 yards, and that looks good, number 33. And then, certainly, this had to be one of the greatest catches of the season, Lionel Manuel. And it's amazing 
that Sims could be that sharp after not playing in a game for five weeks. 17 for 21, 253 yards. And how about the defense here? Did you see the play by Carl Banks? I mean, Lomax didn't even get the snap from center. And if it was a home game yesterday, the Cardinal fans would have been saying, bring back the replacements. This was Earl Farrell, wrong way Farrell, and then uh, by Sikahima on the punt return, tackled by the Phantom. That's it right. Wait, no time for the Jets? That's too bad. The two plays, of course, that killed them, uh, the second and 10, the, uh, the Bryant play, and the third and 10 to Ricky Sanders. Otherwise, as bad as they were, they could have won the game. And uh, the Houston Oilers, who said they were going to move to uh, rumor, move to Jacksonville, no, they just signed a new lease. They will stay in Houston because they're going to build 72 luxury sky boxes worth 30000 apiece. That's over $2 million. So they're going to stay mm. there. Rangers home tonight against the... Uh, Who's going to build it for them? Uh, the Houston, the Astrodome. The town's going to build it? Uh, Houston, the state? The Houston Astrodome. In other words, they're going to they're gonna let them build it. There's going to be big bucks. Mm -hmm. I don't think. Who finances that? I see what you're saying. I'm not sure, as a matter of Well, it would have to be the uh, Houston Astrodome. No, not necessarily. Huh? It might be the yeah. city or the state. Yeah. Not the team. All right. And I question that. But the maybe, the maybe point is the, the owners will, will get $2 million, you see. Well, we're not done yet. If you want the best for less, Morialta found a perfect place for a bargain where only the finest is on the rack. But, but first, the real Giants are back, and Harry Carson joins us live to play Monday <laughs> evening quarterback when Channel 2 News at 6 continues. Slam the door on drugs in our schools. Call 800-541-8787 to find out what works. There are certain rules you have to follow while you're vacationing in Florida. First, dieting is strictly prohibited except on alternate Tuesdays in May. It's against Florida rules to say inter-office memorandum. We have people listening. And nobody's allowed to read today's paper today. No complaints. This is Florida. The rules are different here. In Florida, however, you are permitted to run around in your shorts. The finer things. Happily, some are affordable. Like Grey Poupon Dijon mustard. Grey Poupon has the classic quality of the original French Dijon recipe created centuries ago. A distinctively delicious taste for meats, salad dressings, and sauces. So enjoy one of life's finer pleasures. Pardon, monsieur, est-ce que vous avez du Grey Poupon? Mais bien sûr, Grey Poupon, one of life's finer pleasures. Grandma, read me the story. Cataracts were taking all the joy out of my life. I was scared of an operation and of losing my savings. Then I heard about the New York Cataract Laser Surgeons. They really care. They accepted my Medicare as payment and provided free transportation. And best of all, I can see clearly again. New York Cataract Laser Surgeons. Specialized care by people who care. Call 1-800-331-1000. Get your own car out and bring it in. You'll be driving something new again. Nissan savings around the clock, that's right. Your Nissan dealer is working around the clock to clear out the biggest selection ever of the trucks you love to drive. That means great deals for you, and factory incentives can save you over $2,000 more. Nissan savings around the clock, that's right. But hurry, the clock stops them every second at your tri-state Nissan dealers. We're number one in quality. Well, the Giants have finally taken a step, a small one albeit, but a step towards salvaging a football season scarred by a strike. Giants won their first game yesterday, as you know, 30-7. to By the time the Cardinals and the Giants, Harry Carson is here to talk about that. Harry, first, congratulations. Thank you. Thank Wonderful you. game. It's good to come in here after a win, I tell you. I bet it is. <laughs> Now, one more thing about the strike. Mm -hmm. If you had to do it all over again, would you go out again for the I same would. reason? I would definitely go out, and I would. I feel like most of the, of the players in the National Football League would go out. Do you think, though, the union was wrecked, damaged I severely? I really don't think the union has been wrecked. Uh, we, we know what happened uh, during the strike. We were put through the ringer, so to speak, yeah. and uh, a lot of players really didn't appreciate it. And they have to understand that that was just business. Is there a wider gulf now between you and management? Well, as far as uh, the players and management, there's a there's a little gulf. Is there. it wider now than it was? I think so. Yeah. It's strained. Mm, very much okay. so. Now to the game. 
What was it like yesterday in the locker room? Because you had a couple of guys that went across the line. Mm -hmm. And then on the field, what was it? Well, in the locker room, it was really no big difference. Okay. We all had to put the, our differences behind us, and mm -hmm. uh, we needed to win a ball game desperately. Yes. So whatever differences we had, we just put them on the back burner. How about in the field between the two teams? Since the Cardinals had a lot of guys across the lines, right? No problem. There was no problem. There was no. It was, it was uh, just two regular teams going about the game. Uh, we went out with the purpose of winning. It really didn't matter whether they were the Cardinals or the Cowboys or the Bears or whomever. You looked awfully sharp yesterday. The whole team looked didn't sharp. We? Didn't yes, we? Very, we really did because very much we worked so. Which out. Surprised me. We worked out during the strike. We we stayed in condition, and um, we worked out as a group in practice. Because uh, offensive linemen, I mean, it's, it's really tricky because the timing is so intricate. And everybody was off the ball at the well, same we have time. Some Very guys. Few we have some new guys in there. Damian Johnson is new. Bill Roberts uh, took over for uh, Carl Nelson. And both of those guys did a really good job yesterday. And the defense is, as usual, great stuff. You, you've, you've been able to stuff the run now for years, and you're still doing it. Well, against uh, Chicago, we gave up some big plays. We lost the game to Dallas that we should have won. And I think the defense had a point to prove yesterday. That was a nationally televised yes. game. We, we wanted to look sharp. Uh, and you in, did. In that game. No, we, Joe, we tried to play giant defense yesterday. No, Joe Morris changed the way he runs. I start to his right and then cut back mm -hmm. across the grain. He's a great cutback runner. He's he, doing well He yesterday. will start to one side, pick a hole, and just turn it up. The guys did a good job blocking for him, and he just... Now, uh, can you play with the same intensity for nine more games? Well, and that we're, efficiently, we're going to have to every week. We're going to have to turn it up a little, a little higher, because as the season progresses, uh, we're going to have to give it our best shot. And every week, people are going to shoot for us. And uh, if we don't turn it up, we're going to be sitting at home uh, the first of the year. We have no intentions of sitting at home. We want to be in the playoffs. Well, again, it was a great job the whole team did yesterday. You included, of course. Thank you. And I, I got a hunch you're going to continue doing this. Good I luck. hope so. Good luck, Harry. Thank you. Talk to you next week. Okay. Carol. Okay, thank you. Looking for something wholesale, maybe. Well, coming up, Maury Alter found a place where the best is for less, and it's all for a good cause. So stay with us. What was your reaction? Couldn't believe we had done this to our own child. The doctor already told you you had lead poisoning? Yeah. This vacant lot is used by the kids to play. We found that the lead content in it is incredibly high. It's in the playgrounds. It's in your yard. It may be in your own home. Arnold Diaz investigates Wednesday at 6. We've been kidding ourselves. In trying to get all the fiber recommended by the National Cancer Institute, people added fruit, vegetables, and cereal to their diets. Unfortunately, some added the wrong cereal. You see, unlike Kellogg's All Bran, 99% of other cereals don't provide the additional amount of fiber recommended. 99%. Why settle for a fraction of the fiber you can get? We were kidding ourselves. When there's Kellogg's All Bran. Imagine a new car on the road with a hint of fine European luxury cars, but with an aerodynamic styling all its own, with low wind resistance, front-wheel drive, and a fuel-injected V6 engine for driving performance. Introducing the 1988 Buick Regal. Even with all these features, the best feature is its affordable sticker price, making the 1988 Buick Regal the right car, the right price, right now. At your New York, New Jersey Buick dealers, now for a look at some of the stories we're working on for Channel 2 News at 11. Bree Walker's in the newsroom. Bree? Tonight, Carol, we'll have the fallout from today's plunge on Wall Street. Coming up at 11, tallying up the losses from another grim Monday on the market. We'll have complete coverage of the heavy trading and the latest on a shooting at a Merrill Lynch office in Miami. An investor's desperation turns to violence. Plus, President Reagan tries to calm the shaky market by tackling the budget deficit. Tonight, we'll ask some senators where the budget talks may lead. Is the answer higher taxes? That and a lot more at 11. Join us. Finally this evening, there was this big sale today. Top name items that didn't carry top name prices. And all that showy stuff was all for a good cause. Maury Alter has this tale. I know what you're thinking, Bloomies or Macy's or somebody must be having a sale with this line. You're right, there's a big line. You're right, it's a sale, but it's not a department store. Can you believe this line? 
What's so good about this particular sale? Well, it's uh, spectacular things. There are things donated by the movie stars, and there's furs, and there's uh, jewels, and it's just the, uh, it's just a thrill. It's just an adventure. It is the 16th annual Posh Sale at and for the benefit of the Lighthouse for the Blind. Benet Venuta is in charge. All the proceeds go to the Lighthouse. Gently used designer clothes, furs, uh, costume jewelry, a little of everything. And Benet told us you can get all kinds of unbrand new, brand name stuff. And stuff worn by folks with big names. Hi, uh, we have on Raquel Welch's sequin dress, Raquel Welch's costume earring, and Raquel Welch's necklace. Oh, yes, we have a bathrobe that was given to us by Henry Kissinger. His initials are on it. This is a lovely designer's jacket. Sells for $2,500. But today... But today it's $500. Oh, wrap it up. Going, of course, going. sequins won't keep Madame warm on those cold New York nights. And for a fraction of retail, the posh sale lets her think mink in the city or home on the ranch. Even at pre-owned prices, those prices can range up. I hope those folks weren't all in line for the chinchilla boots. They only had one pair. You have a mink coat, the exact same color. That'll go with your new chinchilla boots. Now, what did these sell for new? They sell for $1,000 new. And you paid what? $100. A piece? No, for the pair. Congratulations. Thank you. The posh sale at the Lighthouse for the Blind on 60th between Lexington and Park runs through Friday. So, uh, what do you think? Well... It was Henry Kissinger's. Maury Alter, Channel 2 News. Being Henry Kissinger's robe doesn't impress me. I do like the color. Sorry, but strictly speaking, posh sale purchases are not tax deductible. Of course, the donations were, unless what you donated, you got free at some posh hotel. <laughs> <laughs> That's Channel 2 News at 6. I'm Jim Jensen. And I'm Carol Martin. Mike Schneider and Bree Walker will be back later for Channel 2 News at 11. And a reminder, following the late news, Dr. Frank Field with a special broadcast which could one day save your life. It's entitled Get Out Alive, How to Survive a Fire. It begins at 11.30. Coming up next is CBS Evening News at Dan Rather. We'll all be back tomorrow at 6. Good evening. With the opinion of the management of Channel 2 is editorial director Leslie Crossan. Earlier this year, lawmakers in Albany had a chance to pass a law allowing public financing of major political campaigns. They chose not to. Now Mayor Koch is asking the city council to do what the legislature wouldn't. It's a good idea. The public financing bill would require candidates for citywide office to raise a set amount in contributions from a large number of people before they qualify for matching funds. That forces candidates to expand their fundraising efforts. They could no longer rely on a small group of well-to-do contributors or their personal bank accounts. It also makes it easier, in theory at least, for people with no ties to traditional big fundraising sources to finance a run for office. The biggest contributors to political campaigns are the people with the biggest financial stakes in the city, like developers. It's hard to nail down whether those hefty contributions buy any special consideration, but the impression that they do is beyond dispute. In recent years, the city has been smothering in a cloud of corruption, much of it centered around influence peddling. Any measure that attempts to lift that cloud is a necessary one. Limiting the ways politicians can milk the money machine is no guarantee that the determinedly crooked among them won't find other paths to corruption. But public financing of campaigns is a way to slam shut at least one of the doors.